Today we are going to build our own block and learn more about Storyblock and how to use it with Nuxt. But first, what is Storyblock? Storyblock is a headless content management system or CMS for short. A headless CMS is a system that only handles the content, essentially chopping the head or the front end from the body. Storyblock stands out because of its intuitive visual editor, freedom when creating custom components, its generous free tier, and also its great documentation and integrations with tools such as Nuxt. We are going to build a simple blog where we can showcase our articles. You can view the source code from the GitHub link in the description. For this tutorial, you will need a Storyblock account, a Netlify account, Node.js and also Nuxt version 3. Let's go to the Storyblock portal and create a new space. Once we have created our space, let's go to Settings, Access Tokens and copy our token since we are going to need it later. Let's go to the Content tab. Storyblock has been so nice to give us a sample homepage. Click on it and you will be greeted by Storyblock's visual editor. Now, in order to view our next tab, we need to change the default environment URL. We can do that by going to Settings, Visual Editor and setting the location to HTTPS localhost 3010. Since Storyblock needs the URL to be in HTTPS, you can follow one of the tutorials I have linked in in the description. Once you have done that, you can go back to the Visual Editor and all you need to do is go to Entry Configuration and set the real path to slash. Once we have our app, we will be able to see it locally in Storyblock. Speaking of app, here is a sample Next 3 project. Now let's install Storyblock by running npm install at storyblock slash next. After it has finished installing, we need to add it in our modules in next config. As you can see, it needs an access token. Let's set the access token to get it from the env. Let's install .env and create a .env file. And then paste the Storyblock token we got from Storyblock into the env. Next step is going to be adding Tailwind. Let's install it by running npm install Nuxt.js Tailwind CSS. Same as Storyblock, let's add it to our Nuxt config. And that should be it, we should be able to use Tailwind in our app. If that doesn't work, you can create a Tailwind config.js file and set the content to resolve the Storyblock folder. When creating a new space, Storyblock automatically creates four default components for us. Page, Grid, Feature, Teaser. Remember, Storyblock handles the content but not the visualization. That means we now have to create the view components which will correspond to the Storyblock components. Let's start by creating a Storyblock folder in our root project. This folder will be auto-detected by the Storyblock module. Let's create page.view. It will contain a single prop called block and this block will be the data we get from Storyblock. We use the v-editable directive and pass in the block and then provide the Storyblock native component that will loop over the body of the block and render all components in that page. Let's create a grid.view file. It will again accept the block as a prop and we will have the v-editable directive. This time it will render all the components in the block.column section. We do the same for the feature.view file and for the teaser.view file as well. Let's change our app.view so we can use the layouts and pages directories. Feel free to create your own layout, for now I have just put in a simple navigation bar. We can now create the pages folder and create index.view file there. We can fetch the page using the use async story block hook, passing in the home page and saying version draft. We can then use the story block component to render that block. Once done, we should be able to see the home page. Currently we have pages slash index.view corresponding to the slash route. However, we want to be able to create pages directly from Storyblock. We can do this by deleting the index.view and creating a view component named dot 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 slug dot view. This will be a special component that gets the slug from the URL and sees if we have a, such a page in Storyblock, otherwise it will return our home page. Next, we are going to start creating our block and adding custom components to our arsenal. Let's go to Storyblock and create a new block in our block library. We name it article and give it an image, a title, a description, content and author. Once we have done that, we can also create a block folder to keep everything organized and in one place. 
For content type, choose existing and then select article. Now you can create pages for new blog posts and they will be of type article. Let's create a new example article and fill it with the fields we defined earlier. I fill in the fields with the data from my last article which was about Nux DevTools. Be sure to check it out if you haven't done so already. Let's now create a nested component that will show all articles when the user visits slash blog. In StoryBlock let's create a new component, all articles and it only needs a headline field. In VS Code in our StoryBlock folder let's create article.view. Again we have our v-editable block, we also have an image and then we have a container containing the title, description, the author and the rich text. In order to properly parse the rich text, we use the render t rich text function. We then use the vhtml directive to display it properly in the template. Now if we go to the example blog post, it should look something like this. Let's go to our components folder and create article card. As you can see, it will contain a next link that will redirect to the slash and the slug of the blog post. We will have an image and then in the card we will only display the title, the author and the description. Now let's create all articles in our story block folder. Here we use the story block API hook, use story block API and use it to fetch all stories, filtering them by our block folder and making sure we don't take the block slash index route. We then loop over the articles, displaying them in our article card component. In the end, it should look something like this. Now it's time to deploy our next app to Netlify. Netlify is a web platform that includes build, deploy and serverless backend services for web applications and dynamic websites. It will make it easy for us to deploy our block in a few simple steps. First, we need to push our code to GitHub and remember to not push any secret keys. Then we can go to Netlify and select add new site and then import an existing project. We can import our project from GitHub and set the build command to be npm run generate. We can set up the environment variables by going to settings, build and deploy and then finding the environment variables table and then typing in our story block token right in there. And we are done, now we should be able to visit our live website as soon as the build is deployed. For final touches, make sure you change the URL in Storyblocks Visual Editor to see the live version of your website. Let's set up webhooks so that once we create new content, the site is redeployed automatically. In Netlify, go to Site Settings, Build and Deploy and go to Build Hooks. Create a new hook called Storyblock and copy the unique URL. Go to Storyblocks Settings and find webhooks. Under the field Story Published and Unpublished, paste the copied URL. Now every time a story is published or unpublished, the deploy will trigger. Now you are officially done, congrats. I hope this tutorial will be useful to you. Go ahead and give Storyblock a try. Make sure to also follow me on my socials for more view related content. Bye.